Oh, welcome back, everybody. Um, I just wanted to do a quick update, actually, um, f about autofocus. Obviously, that's what we're all talking about with Fuji. Um, the I rolled back my firmware for the Fujifilm XH2S. I have two of them. Uh, first of all, context: I'm a working professional using these cameras for paid work, and I did. Um, I rolled back one of my XH2Ss to 1.03 pretty much as soon as that was an option and kept the other one on what I consider to be a kind of sweet spot for performance and features, which is 5.03. And you can see on my channel more information about 5.03 and I can demonstrate why it's kind of decently okay. But um, I did test out the 1.03 um, for on one camera for a while, but I felt that was kind of difficult to do a comparison in a, in a real event kind of situation. So what I ended up doing was just rolling back both my cameras to 1.03. And now that I've done that for about four weeks and had sort of two or three paid events under that, I feel better informed to give you an opinion of what I feel as though the all focus is like. And so some context again, with my work I'm doing stills primarily, but I also do do video for my client as well. So I'm definitely a, a hybrid shooter in that sense. And what I've discovered is, it's true what a lot of people say about 1.03, but there is a big but. It seems to be quite optimized for um, a single subject in your frame. As soon as you get multiple uh, subjects in your frame, the AF just gets very confused. It's just quite, it gets a lot more random as to who's gonna pick up and choose to be actually the person you want when you have things like tools like face and eye detection on. So with 1.03, I found myself having to bail out of using face and eye detection a lot more. And uh, I pretty much live in AFC with wide tracking. That's my default mode that I use. And so under that kind of situation, I, I would have to bail out and just use a, a box and place that over the person's face and head and, and get sort of success. And I found a similar thing with video. Um, oh, video does work differently anyway. Um, if you have an AF box, if you're not in multi and you're in area for autofocus with your box, it doesn't behave like wide tracking. You could have the box over this, over an object, but if you've got face and eye detection on it, it'll, it'll prioritize that and it'll go to somebody's face and eye outside of the box. Fuji, Fujifilm, the way they would do AF is quite infuriating and strange at, at the best times anyway. But I still found the same problem, um, even, in, even in a multi or area, the face it wanted, it just, I couldn't redirect it often uh, very well. And I thought I was going crazy because when I bought my XH2Ss, um, they were running 3.0 out, out the box. So I'd never actually experienced 1.03, but somewhere after 3.0, and I'm not sure where this firmware was, Fujifilm actually changed fundamentally how the face and eye detection works. And under wide tracking anyway, that's for sure. Um, and what happens is, I can't tell you which firmware it is, but I know it is, it behaves like this on 5.03. When you have the AF box over your subject, it's that's the only time it will actually give you an eye or face to detect on that person. So a few times I've had, had the camera, I'd have maybe orientated it like this, and maybe the AF box is bottom left hand side corner, my subjects, you know, more of the upper frame. And I'm thinking, wait, why is face and eye detection not kicking on this person? Why is it not detecting? Why is it not giving me a box? It's because my AF box is just accidentally went in the bottom left hand corner, it's got nothing, so it's given me no face or eye. Now you can even think that's a, a bad thing or a good thing. For me, it's really good because I tend to use that face and eye box. I, I bring that box up, put it over my subject, and then it gives me a face and an eye. And it kind of, it's like zone focusing in a way. Very useful when you've got multiple, like say you're doing a wedding or something like that, you've got somebody coming down the aisle or and you've got you've, your shots quite wide, you've got guests in the pews and chairs watching. You don't want your face and eye detection just to randomly pick those other people in the frame. You want it to be on the bride and the, her father or whatever, that's the, the, the wedding party that come down the aisle. Having that box and being able to, to say, only choose the faces where this box is, I find really important. And it's important to my work because my work is kind of mul multiple people are always in the frame all the time. I want to have really Real clear choices of where that face and eye detection assists um, where I place that AF box. So for me and what I do, 5.03 is just a little bit better. Um, it's still not as good AF, um, but it's just there's a few other features I like as well. At 5.03, we can have ISO bound to a dial if you want, where we don't get that 1.03. Even simple things like this little Bluetooth remote here 
question that I got from JJC. I quite often use this. Um, I hate the app, so if I could just use this to wirelessly trigger a camera or say I'm setting up strobes and flashes and I can't grab somebody to test my lights with, I'll stand in front of my camera and I can trigger things with this. So I find, you know, for me, 5.03, it seems to be okay. Remember, I think it majorly got broke at about 6.0. Uh, 5.10 might be okay as well. And I do actually need time coding stuff in the near future. So I may, be in, may go up to 5.10, but I've never actually done that before. 5.10? 5.10? Um, but 5.03 for me anyway seems to have, seems to just rein in AF a little bit better when it comes to multiple people. But what people say about 1.03 for sure is absolutely true. As soon as you go on 1.03, system feels snappier. Everything feels quicker. In the menus, navigating the menus, everything's, if you push, push a button, hit playback, anything, it's it's faster, 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 faster. Um, and you notice that straight away. And I've done some tests, and I'll maybe overlay these <laughs> these test results um, on, the, on, the, on the computer here on over the video later on so you can see what I'm talking about. But I've done um, some testing, and I've discovered a few things that I thought was noteworthy as well. For whatever reason, getting off um, CH burst modes, which is continuous high, going down to continuous low and even like eight frames a second, you get a lot better hit rates and keepers, um, quite substantially so. As soon as you go to 10, it gets a bit worse. I notice as well that you have blackouts at, um, when you're using the ES mode at least um, on eight, um, seven, five and three frames a second. I don't know why you get blackouts here, but you don't get any blackouts on the high burst rates, but the drop in accuracy is, is quite substantial. And I did on 1.03, on the left, I did um, a series of shots. So left one with specular highlights, um, the brighter of the monochrome images. That one's done on 1.03, and through that burst rate, it's 100%. There's not a single shot that isn't in focus. This was using the 50, the 140, 2.8, and I just shot it. Um, AFC with your your standard settings that would you know enable uh, success for that kind of kind of shot so it's tracking continually updating and all the rest of it, but it was a hundred percent and I've never really had hundred percent before at all in any electronic shot mode. But I needed to drop to about eight frames a second to get that. The image on the right I took today on five point oh three the sort of um, lower contrast mon monochrome version, and it's not quite as good. It's, but it is, it's, it's, it's acceptably good for me. Um, the real difference you might notice is the one on the left, it continues to track my boy as he gets very close to the camera, whereas the one on the right, you kind of get so far and then the camera's just, it's like the closer distance stuff it really struggles with. Um, and so I think that's the real difference between 1.03 is it's handling that, that medium distance to close to the camera, continuous autofocus on the Z axis much, much better. This just for me isn't something I do a lot of my work. Most of the subjects I shoot are stationary, the musicians or orchestra, this and sitting in a chair and whatnot. I'm not really being challenged on the Z axis, which is another reason why I'm going back. But if I was doing something like wedding work or something, I might can I might keep one of my cameras on 1.03 for those shoots of people like brides and grooms and things coming down the aisles, not grooms, brides and fathers and the wedding party coming down the aisle, stuff like that, it could be really useful for. But the problem is under 1.03, if you in situations like that, you have multiple faces everywhere, good luck for it to actually pick the one you want. Um, and I have actually done some testing with 1.03. I've, 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 um, I've up on my 32 inch monitor, I've had like some previous shots I've done of like a group of people and got the AF box and put of wide track and put it over the person I want. And it seems to behave and it does do pick that person and nobody else. And then other times it doesn't, and it is picking somebody else. It's very weird, and in real, all I can say is just you know, you can have a look at my my past videos if you like to to see if I if I really do show you test results, and I do. And I just don't have time for that today, but believe me when I say it, in event work in reality, I do find it very random as to what it does, and I can't rein in that control like I can with five point oh three with the box. I need that wide track and F box. I can use a joystick quickly to place it where I want. Um, and that just helps it narrow down and say, this is the person's face and eye I want you to, to grab, not that person, Bob or Jane to left or right, whatever, or distance and foreground, all that kind of stuff. So 5.03 just behaves a little bit more in that regard. I also find in 1.03 a situation where when I was 
taken multiple shots as well and very high burst rate. So as soon as I did something like 20 frames a second or 30 frames a second, I managed to squeeze off a lot more shots. However, those shots were quite heavily back focused. So it wasn't something I was really capable of, you know, controlling or reining in at all. So that was just something that's like, I managed to squeeze off a lot more shots, but the shots that I took, all of them were really quite more in the back of the ear and stuff like that. So it could be that, I don't know, I don't really have any concrete con conclusions. It's it's a bit random as to how well you do with it. I've got lots of different lenses. I've, I've tested with the 90 f2, the 50 to 140. Surprisingly enough, the 50 to 140 is probably the best autofocus performing lens I have. It even trumps the 90 f2, which is quite a surprise to me. Um, I get similar hit rates, but the 90 f2 is slightly a few more, just random, completely out of focus. Thing about the 56 1.2 RWR with either of these firmwares, it doesn't really make a big difference. The, just the lens motor is just too bad. It just doesn't really help. And what happens is it'll be okay for a certain distance, and then from about four meters to yourself, under focus priority, that is, there's not a single damn shot rings out. Even when your subject is walking quite slowly, it just simply just cannot keep um, keep up. And so if we look at statistics alone for the 56 1.2, you might think, oh look, it's got like 23 out of 23 shots in focus. The problem here is it should have had another 10 shots that it just didn't even ring off at all. And I judge that as a fail. Um, but st that's the problem with statistics. If we just look at hit rates, it can do okay, but it's not getting the shots like other lenses can squeeze off. It, you know, the 50 F2 would just completely dominate and, and capture double the amount of frames and shots and manage those near um, closer shots to the, the, the user. So anyway, I just want to make that really quick. You know, for me personally, I'm going back to 5.03 as a firmware that I'm using for Fujifilm. And I don't, I feel like it, it's not that um, anybody's wrong. 1.03 is definitely better for lots of situations. And maybe, um, you know, it's, it, and I, what I also want to say is I think it's really cool that the community came together and actually made this possible for us users to roll. But I don't know any other community that has been able to do that. Um, I know Fujifilm's not ideal. I still feel as though like the features that I'm getting from it, I can work with the autofocus limitations. Um, <clears throat> it would be nice if it was better. And it definitely, 6.0 broke it. The fix that came with 7.0 was pretty lame. I've heard that Japan is supposedly looking into a fix for this, but that's just some kind of rep telling some guy in a chat. It's not like anything official has been announced. And I don't think we'll ever officially get anything from Fujifilm on this because as soon as they say that they've broken something, I do believe they're liable for suing and all sorts of stuff like, like a mass law um, suit or something like that. So you're not going to get that kind of transparency. From somebody who uses Fujifilm professionally, what I want is just for them to be swift and quickly and fix things and address things and listen to the community. There's no doubt about it. AF has gotten worse with the kaizen firmware updates as we've gone for sure but they have made it better in some ways i think these conversations are very difficult to have because the devil's always in the details and how much you're affected by the problems depends on what you really do with your camera um, i'm glad that at some point they made the face and eye detection be controlled by where you place your box and if you if the person isn't over under you know overlaying the box you're not getting a face or eye detection to come up i personally like that you might not though so um it just depends but i like that it did that for me wanting to get them just to roll back the af to 1.03 i'm like no i don't actually want that that's not the right way to go about this i want them to take the best parts of 1.03 with the 5.03 and make something that is you know doing being sensible so it's just the patch notes suck as well in the firmware you don't know what they're really doing when it just says improved af it's like what does that even mean you know like like what actually have you done because at some point they definitely made wide tracking and the af box in wide tracking mode only work and only pick up a face if you put that box over the subject and that was great because i needed that i didn't want it to be random i don't want to use my camera have three people in the shop at various distances and just let the camera just go, ah, we'll just pick this one. That's not the person I want, I want this person. And and therefore, it's not about having face and eye detection, it's about the implementation of it on the system. That's what's really important. So <clears throat> this video is longer than it needs to be already. Um, I'll probably just name this video something like 1.03 versus 5.03. It's fairly thin on you know uh, evidence. It is just anecdotal. I'm sorry about that, but I just thought it was a topical time to talk about autofocus. I'm I still feels like early days for Fuji. Let's just see what they do. 
um, with the next sensor and processor. Um, I can make it work. I completely understand for others it's not doing what they need it to do. They shoot a lot more things on a Z axis than I do. If that's your case, yeah, I can I can get that. There was one guy, I think it was the big negative, and I think he ditched Fuji for Sony because he got sick of that wedding moment aisle. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I can relate to that. That seems fair. That's That really pushes this camera. It's never been good at it. Even on 1.03, it's not terrific at it. Um, <clears throat> but maybe you could have just bought a single Sony camera and a single lens just for that one task and still keep your Fuji for the rest of the day if you really like the colors and other things that you know appeal to you about the Fuji brand, you can still use it. Um, for me, I'm not jumping systems just yet because of this issue um i'll give them a bit more time i've got a bit more patience but anyway i'll wrap it up uh thank you for watching and until next time see ya